mission. This one did not travel. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think we should hone in on the Oakland County cases. So right now there are three cases that have been described in Oakland County. Previously, there was one female who did have a history of international travel. And tonight they described two males. One male had a history of domestic travel, but one male had no travel history, which implies that that might be related to local transmission within the state of Michigan. Now, the one thing they did not disclose, and I did actually contact the state to ask specifically, is whether that individual who had no history of travel had any contact with any of the other local COVID-19 cases. They basically said that they could not comment on that, but I think that they would have if they could have, in the sense that if it was, they would have said so. So I would surmise at this time that one Oakland County patient that did not travel may very well be an evidence of local transmission at this point, which changes everything. Now, if you look also, there are domestic travel cases that they've described. One in Oakland County, one in St. Clair County, one in Washtenaw County, and one in Wayne County. All of those four patients traveled domestically. That is, they traveled within the United States. The implication is they may have acquired the infection somewhere in the United States. However, there's really no proof of that, meaning they may very well have traveled somewhere within the United States come back and still acquired it locally. So that does so the fact that they had domestic travel does not exclude yeah. local transmission either, but almost certainly the single Oakland County case, unless they had direct contact with an Oakland County or a Wayne County positive COVID-19 patient, mm -hmm. yeah. that's local transmission. Local transmission. Fair amount of frustration that we're hearing and seeing online emails from people. We're not getting very much specific detail yeah. about the locales right. uh, of, of, of uh, the, the cities that in which these people, these patients live. Uh, other states are doing that. Have you have you been told anything about why we're not getting that? No, I haven't. And I contacted the state about that. And really, they're very they're being um, I think cautious about releasing any patient information because they're trying to protect patient privacy. But honestly, yeah. again, I've said it in the past. I think releasing the the city that they're in is a reasonable thing. I mean, we found out today that the Wayne County case was from Livonia, and we found out from the mayor of Livonia yeah. based on a tweet. Yeah. And I think they may have done that because they were planning on closing Livonia schools specifically already. Sure. Yeah. That is prior to the governor's announcement just now. So, you know, hopefully more information will be coming and hopefully the state will change their policy on releasing the city as well yeah. as yeah. the county that these individuals reside in. Got a lot of people concerned with that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, Doc. Thank you. Let me quickly, in case you're just joining us, get back to the headline of the night here though Michigan schools along with these new cases uh, the announcement just happening now Michigan schools K through 12 being shut down starting this Monday which is uh, March 16th and run basically it's going to amount to a three week spring break uh, for a lot of kids running through uh, Sunday April 5th for all schools in Michigan so much to figure out with yeah. that and and a lot of kids go to school and that's the only time they have uh, healthy food to uh, eat that's how a, are they going yeah not the so least of which questions. to figure yeah, that out to figure too out, yeah. Beaumont Hospital announced tonight it has established a coronavirus hotline and putting controls in place to try to minimize people in their hospital.